After yesterday's review episode, we are pushing on into a brand new season as we have moved forwards now to the start of another Premier League campaign. In today's episode, we're going to show you the transfers ins and outs and also show you exactly what happened in our second pre-season at Leeds United. OK then, we have jumped back into the game and we are at the 30th of July 2022 and as you can see, we are about to kick off our Premier League campaign once again against Newcastle and strangely enough, our second game will also be against Brighton. So exactly the same as it was last season. Don't know whether it's a bug, might be deja vu. However it comes though, we are going to be playing those two teams first. So as mentioned yesterday, in today's episode, we are going to be showing you what we have done during the summer. The players we have brought in, the players we have released, the amount of money we signed, players for... And also we're going to show you the finances that we have, a little look at the fixture list and also what else has been happening since you've been away. So as ever, let's start off in the transfers tab. Let's go to the transfer history and look at the end of last season, the deals that we managed to get done. So the first player that we brought into the club was Axel de Sarsi. He is a 24-year-old French defender that we signed from Seville. Um, we are letting a few players go and we also need a little bit of depth at centre-back. So he's one player that we bought in for quite a bargain, really. We only paid £3 million up front. The deal will rise to £6 million eventually. And I think he has some of the key stats that we really look for in a defender with good tackling. He has good heading, jumping reach, strength, stamina. I think he'll be a player that will slot in seamlessly at the heart of our defence. The next player that we bought in was a bit of a special one, Ricky Puig. We managed to get him from Barcelona for £13 million. Bit of a spoiler alert, our board doesn't think this is a good deal. I think this is a fantastic deal. I think as a 22-year-old, he has his best years ahead of him. And for £13 million, we have signed a player now that will compete with Bentacore, Phillips and Click in the middle of the park. And we are building a team that we have got a great core around. The next transfer dealing that we did was again to cover at centre-back, Jimmy Dunn popped up on a scouting report saying he was quite a good player for the money that we would end up paying for him. I think we paid £1.7 million. Yeah, £1 million pounds for him. Uh, he has been a bit of a journeyman in his career. You can see in the picture there he has played for Burnley as well. But in terms of a player who can come in, play in a cup game here or there, or fill in when we need, I think he is a bargain. So moving forwards to the next season and the first signing we made in this part of the season was Ali Ackman. If anybody here was watching my Red Bull Leipzig save, De Rotten Bullen, at the end of FM21, you will know exactly what this kid is about. He is a lethal goal scorer. Just looking at his European Under-21 Championship games there, played eight games, scored nine goals, an average rating of 7.81. I think he is going to be an absolute steal. We have paid £6.5 million up front. I think there is a few add-ons to come with that too. Looking at his stats, you can see he's not the finished article. So at 20 years old, he will develop, he will get better. But the core of what we are looking for is there. And we have past experience with him in FM21. So I think he's going to be a steal. The next player that we confirmed was that permanent signing of Benjamin Sesco. We had him on the loan deal last season. We then got the chance to sign him for 8.25 plus 2 million in add-ons. So a total of 10.25 for the permanent deal, 2.7 for the loan deal. So around £13 million to get one of the best young strikers in the game. And the last player that we managed to sign was Moritz Kiergaard. He is a 19-year-old Danish player who was also playing for Salzburg. We got him for £11.5 You might have seen him at the end of the season review. He is a player who I think will develop and compete in that midfield, whether it be in the attacking midfielder or in one of the Masala roles. I think he has the potential to do it all. He also can stand in as a striker, but I don't think we'll use him there. So on the flip side of that, the players that we have let leave the club, we have Leif Davis, who was unknown last season. He is a left back who was asking to leave anyway. So we have moved him on for a small fee. We then have let Charlie Cresswell go out on loan. Past Pascal Strumick was one that I didn't really want to let go of. I tested the waters to see what kind of money we could get. And Leeds really valued him at a lot higher than what we did get. But Atletico came in with £9.5 million bid. 
he asked us to consider it and then the move ended up getting done uh the other players that left so leah for halder he has left the club he left for 8.5 million pounds he became unhappy Tottenham made an approach it kind of unsettled him he asked to leave and i thought we won't keep a player here who is unhappy and then at the end of the last season the only major real sale that we made was Liam Cooper has gone to Brentford. If you remember, I did say at the start of the save, I wasn't 100% convinced by Cooper. He did put in some good performances across the season, but at the age of 30 now, he's probably getting to the wrong end of his career to be somebody who we can develop into a role. And I think 1.5, we probably didn't get enough money for him. We probably could have got a little bit more out of the transfer but with the players that we brought in, I think we are adequately covered there. So in terms of the finances, we started off with that £49 million yesterday and we have pretty much spent the whole whack. We have 484000 left and we have a wage budget now of £1.7 million and we are spending £1.6. So there is money available. There might be a few wheeling dealings coming in the next couple of days. And let's show you what those might be. So in terms of players coming in, the only player we are looking at is John Joe Kenny. He is a chief option. Came through the scouting report and said for the money, he might be a value. So 1.1 million. Hopefully, if we can get that one done, he will provide cover for both right back and um, centre back. He can cover there too. The players that we are still looking to move out. So we've got a few here that are loan deals. We do not want to let go of Pulido. We have a player here called Warren Wilson. He is a new gen or regen and he is only 16 years old and already has teams left, right and centre in the Premier League coming in with bids. We've been turning them down all summer. Luckily, he's only 16, so uh, not really too unhappy with us turning those bids down, but he's definitely one to keep an eye on in this save. We have Lewis Bate, who was the subject of a £1.1 million bid from Aston Villa we turned down. Matthias Bogus, he is a player that we are looking to move on. Leeds valued him at £30 million. I'm not 100% sure why, but they did. We aren't getting anywhere near that amount of money. We're getting something like £4.7 million. Uh, Somerville is another player that looks like he's moving on. He has both a permanent and loan option. Helder Costa is the other player that we are going to be moving on. I think we had a bid from... Yeah, a three million pound bid from Seville. Um, it's on the lower side. Nobody was willing to even go up to five million pound for him, so we dropped the price to three million just to get him off the wage books and also to get him off of the squad. I I don't think he'll be a big miss with some of the players that we have already signed to replace him. So then, in terms of pre-season action. We kicked off our pre-season with a 2-2 draw against DC United. We played absolutely terribly in the first half and we found ourselves 2-0 down quite early on. And then we came to life in the second half with two goals from Jack Harrison. In the next pre-season game, we played New York City FC and we won that game 2-0. This was a comprehensive victory. We absolutely played them off the park. Tyler Adams, funnily enough, an American, scored both of the goals that saw us win this game. We then went and played Orlando City and had a 3-0 win in that game. Again, we absolutely outplayed them everywhere on the pitch. 31 shots, 11 on target. We scored three goals from Halozek, Shackleton and Bamford. We then went and played Columbus Crew. Had a 1-1 draw against them. Didn't really play very well in this game and not a lot happened at all in the second half. We took the lead early in 33 minutes and then they equalised on 40 minutes. and Nothing happened in the second half. We then come back to British Shores and we went to play East Kilbride. Beat them 8-0 as you would expect us playing against inferior opposition. Goals pretty much all across the squad. The next game that we played was against Angers. At Ellen Road, won that game 3-0, played really well. Ben to Rafinha and Sesco with goals. And we have had another good pre-season. I thought going to America and playing the two games at the end was a, a sterner test, certainly, than playing some of the Singaporean teams that we played last season. So another good pre-season in the books there. So looking at the schedule whilst it's here, you can see again we start against Newcastle and against Brighton. A little bit strange to have the same two fixtures two seasons in a row 
nothing we can control. We then have this tough run of games where we've got Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham and Liverpool all in August. That could be a difficult start to the season. Our first game against Man UFC is on the 23rd of October. Then there is the break for the World Cup here. Play Fulham on the 5th of, December, uh, 5th of November sorry, and then don't come back until the 26th of December where we play Wolves. We then have Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal all in a row again in the end of January, beginning of February. And looking later into the season, we have the second game against Man UFC on the 1st of April. And our running consists of Aston Villa, Norwich and Brentford. So hopefully we will, well, we won't need some favourable results. But if we do need favourable results, we will have an easier running than some of our rivals. So then I think that is going to wrap it up in terms of the transfers and the pre-season. Um, nothing else really to report except for the fact we are on the eve of another Premier League campaign and I look forward to kicking off once again in the Premier League with Leeds United. There we are then, another pre-season in the books, our second pre-season as manager of Leeds United, another successful pre-season and also another successful dip into the transfer market. I think we've signed some players with some real quality, some future potential and I think that the squad is getting stronger as we move along. Let me know what you think of the transfers down in the comments section below. But if you're at this point of the video and you are enjoying the content and you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Go off, do that. And if you are one of the people that have already done it, I am going to wrap up this episode and I will see you tomorrow when we kick off against Newcastle United in the Premier League.